Hello everybody, welcome to another 12 minutes and 55 seconds of your life that you'll never get back. Um, this will be video number two of the tale, and this actually right where we're at right now is my probably favorite upgrade so far of the aircraft. Um, I, after doing a, quite a lot of bit of research, went to the Cleveland Tool website and purchased the, uh, I believe it's the Safe Air 1 pedostatic kit. Um, and so that last little bit that you just saw there, and as you can see, uh, up towards the end of the skin there is, uh, the pedostatic nipple being installed into the side of the skin. Um, I guess it can be riveted, which I kind of figured out after the fact. Um, but it also says that you can just use tank sealant. And so you essentially drill out the hole that Vans has already supplied in the skin to a slightly larger hole. I can't remember. I think it was three eighths or something along those lines. And uh and then I just put tank sealant uh after scuffing the side of the skin, put tank sealant around the edge of the skin and uh installed that uh static port on both sides of the skins. Um Vans kit that they supply with it is just a pop rivet. Uh, I saw a lot of people saying they wish they um, kind of supplied something that had a little bit more grab to it because it's kind of tough to grab onto a pop rivet, etc, etc. Anyways, long story short, very, very happy with that kit from Cleveland. Uh, also, just going to throw out there, there's pretty much nothing that... Uh, I've bought from Cleveland that I'm displeased with so um, yeah anyways moving on um, the side skin here I back riveted uh, thanks to my AMP buddy Taylor and uh, his brother Morgan they I came over to visit them saw that they had back riveted um, or they told me that they back riveted their side skins and that that was absolutely the way to go. Uh, I feel the same way, although if you notice, I also put a video out there saying there was a couple of rivets that I wish I had not back riveted. And uh, we're going to get to a photo portion of that here shortly. And I'll try and um, just kind of give it a little bit more explanation, even though I already have a video kind of explaining what I did and what I wish I had done. Um, and I'll try to make a link to that. But, uh, yeah, so currently still working on the bottom skin, and then shortly I'll be merging the side skins to that. And so I guess also I feel the need to say that uh, this is, well, back there was the time and point when I uh, attached the yaw bracket to the bell cranks. Um, I'll try and post a link to that too. Uh, that's a lot. I'm not, uh, not going to promise it. You can also go through the video history and find that. Um, here though in the chair as you can see is the the final aft rib with the tail cone section and that tail cone section is a stout piece of aluminum I, I don't know exactly what the thickness is but um, and you would think that I would have realized that and kind of stopped messing around on the back end there to essentially fit that piece now I'm sure what I was doing on my phone there was looking up how people fit that piece. Um, it takes a lot of pressure. It takes a lot of kind of bending and working the aluminum to to make it fit correctly. And that's not necessarily like uh, um, using 
any type of tool to bend it. It's mostly just your hands and pressure. But uh, coming up is the uh, essentially how I fit the tail cone in. There you go. And as you can see, if I would have left at least three or four of the rivets on the left hand side of this photo out, it would have allowed this, the, the most outer skin enough flexibility to get the other skin in. Um, yeah. And again, go back and look at that video. That, that was a pretty decent video of what I wish I had and had not back riveted. But no matter how you really split it, that tail cone section is tough. Uh, now is pretty much a one-man show, just trying to rivet the aft rib and the second most aft rib. Uh, and then here's the uh, the rudder stop horn. This is the bucking bar and the gun that I used. And you can see the beehive. I've essentially modified the beehive so that I can get straight up to the 90 degree portion of that um, stop horn. There it is, uh, essentially modified to where you can see I kind of cut the curve off of the uh, very top right hand side, if you will, of the beehive so that I can get to those top two rivets. I think I have probably five or six beehives, so cannibalizing one was not necessarily an issue if you're going to be buying new guns buying a beehive or two with it would not be necessarily a bad idea for certain portions like this and then there's the final assembly and you can see the obviously the uh, the set rubbed up against the 90 degree portion of that uh, rudder stop and I went back and just primered it a little bit more and that's why I had the blue tape all around the sides was just to get a little bit more primer in there so it doesn't rust or come to the natural conditions uh, here my buddy Mike joins me so that we can mostly finish up uh, just riveting the uh, bottom skin to the side skins there's a built-in J channel to I believe it's the bottom skin and uh, that's without a doubt a two-man job as you can see and then at one point in time I figured out the Efficiency is just going to be greater by turning it 90 degrees and yeah there we go man that's satisfying to see so many rivets just put in like that but this was probably a good five six hour day just trying to get all these rivets set Like everybody else, the Longerons need a little bit of protection because inevitably you'll forget about them and run into them somehow. And of course we all disappear. Uh, I think I'm, um, yeah, just loading in fresh rivets there. And then... I'm not exactly sure what uh, what I'm doing for the rest of it. You can see the wiring harness has already been put in. That wasn't too particularly tough. It's the toughest part of that is just essentially thumbing through the three or four pages of stuff you don't need to know to get to the wiring harness because uh, I think as Vans figured out, uh, and I mean that's why we're all on revision one of the empennage plans, they clearly figured out that the wiring harness was three or four pages too late. And once people got the side skins on, there was no way to get the wiring harness in. And so they just kind of put a little note in there, hey, skip to these pages and then install the wiring harness. 
hear the kids and my wife Tiffany are helping load rivets or Tiffany's bucking while I'm putting the bar on it. And then I'm just doing a couple, actually this last little bit here, I'm doing a couple of by myself and most of them were at the intersection of a longeron and a rib and I could not for the life of me to get those two bucks straight of course the skins are angled outward because they are growing for the baggage area and uh, to get a bucking bar over the J channel that is back riveted onto the skin at the intersection of a rib was particularly tough for me. My buddy Taylor, who I essentially seek most of my guidance from whenever I find some particular thing where I'm getting stumped, gave me his bucking bar, which kind of had a C channel cutout in it. And uh, so bucking bar number three has been purchased. Actually, it's probably four or five. But as far as tungsten bars go, bucking bar number three has now been purchased. And that's one of the tungsten bars with the C channel kind of cut out in it so that it can fit over the longerons. And then after that, we essentially have pretty much half of a canoe. I think right now I'm just squeezing most of the rivets along the longeron there, which is that the top half of the canoe, the big sea channels that run on either side. I think I'll just let this one play out. Hopefully uh, somebody gets a little something from it. And I will go back and see if I can make links to the two tidbit videos that I put out a while ago. I'll see everybody in the next video.